signs is a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. And it, it's pretty long and complex, but it's actually not too hard. The thing to remember, and, and this is why I really said it was very important to make sure that lowercase letter is always length of a side opposite a given angle. And that angle is a capital letter. So this a squared has to correspond to angle a. This is the side opposite angle A. These two sides are the same as these two sides. In this equation, there are four variables. One leg, two legs, three legs, and an angle. If I were to draw a triangle on a Cartesian coordinate plane and label this triangle ABC, so this is angle A, angle B, angle C, and I'm going to call this axis U and this axis V. So as not to get them um, mistaken for independent dependent variables. So then this would be side A opposite angle A. This would be side B opposite angle B. And this would be side C. If I draw the altitude in this triangle, then um, I will go over U units up V units, right over U, up V on my V axis, and the coordinates of this point right here would be U, V. The coordinates of this point right here is I will go over C units and up zero units. This coordinate is zero, zero. Okay. Then this angle right here, A, I know that the cosine of angle A, the cosine of angle A, is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, u over b. And the sine of angle a is equal to the opposite of the hypotenuse, so it's v over b. If I cross multiply here, multiply both sides by b, I can see these cancel, and that v is equal to b sine of a. And right here, I'll multiply both sides by b. And U is equal to B cosine of A. Okay. And then, law of cosines, you're going to use this a ton actually, Gavin. Anytime you're building anything with non right triangles, you use the law of cosines or law of sines. So, I, I mean, the last project you're telling me about was on the back of your truck where you're um, building that headache bar or headache rack. So, you know, if you want to do any sort of non-right triangle inside of there for support, to find any of those angles and lengths, use the law of cosines. And same with any kind of trusses in the, in the roof design. Anything that has a triangle that's non-right, you can use law of cosines. Courtney, was there a question? Okay, so now I'm going to use the distance formula to find the length of A, right? So the distance between two coordinates, you know that a squared is going to equal the x value, u, this x value minus this x value, u minus c squared, plus the difference in the y values, v minus 0 squared. So I'm using the distance formula. The distance between two points is equal to the square root of the x values minus each other squared plus the difference in the y values minus each other squared. So the distance d between two coordinates is x2. I'm going to call this x2, y2, x1, y1. So I have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay. And then I square both sides, and the square gets rid of the square root. Right, so, that square gets, so the distance squared is equal to that. Okay. And then v minus 0 is just v. Right? So I'm going to erase that 0 here. So now I just have v squared. 
going back to this, my right triangle trig here. I know that u is equal to v cosine of a, and v is equal to v sine of a. So I have here a squared equals u, which I know is b cosine of a, minus c, quantity squared. And then this v right here, this v we said is this right here, b sine of a. So this is plus b sine of a squared. So I replace u and v in terms of sine and cosine. Okay, let me erase some of this. So now what I want to do is foil that out. So I have a squared is equal to b cosine of a minus c quantity squared, which is b cosine of a minus c times b cosine of a minus c, right? This thing squared is this thing times this thing, plus this right here, I distribute that square through this to get b squared sine squared of a. Now I'm just going to foil those out. a squared is equal to b squared cosine squared of a minus bc cosine of a minus bc cosine of a. So minus 2 bc cosine of a plus c squared plus b squared sine squared of a. All, all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to move these next to each other. I'm going to put this one and this one next to each other. So I have a squared is equal to b squared cosine squared of a plus b squared sine squared of a. And then I have this minus t, whoops. This minus 2bc cosine of a plus c squared. We're coming, coming together here. Now I have a common term just in this and this. That common term is b squared. So I'm going to factor that b squared out. So I have a squared equals b squared. I'm pulling a b squared out of these two terms. So I'm left with a cosine squared of a. I pull b squared out of this plus sine squared of a minus 2bc cosine of a plus c squared. Do we recognize anything there? Yeah, I just so lost. Yeah. Yeah. Lost. Josh? Uh, exactly. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. It's a Pythagorean identity. This whole thing is equal to y. Oh, so you just solved it. Yeah. Oh, and this thing God. drops out. So what I'm left <laughs> with is a squared equals b squared plus c squared, right? Plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of a. So what I've done here is derive the law of cosines. So I create that picture sec. I create that picture on my Cartesian coordinate plane and I assign variables to all of it, and I plug them in, and I solve using all my previous math from geometry and trig and identities, and I'm able to derive the law of cosines. And again, the whole point of the law of cosines is to solve for pieces in non-right triangles.